on the uh, back side of the Famicom you have uh, six Philip head screws. And then you have uh, four screws for each of the boards. If you remove the controllers, it will be much easier to maneuver all the things. I'm going to desolder the uh, cables for the on and off switch, but I will need to uh, add some fresh new solder first. It will be easier to remove later. And I will also need to desolder the ribbon cable connecting the power board and the uh, main board. I mean power board and the audio board. Okay, the next thing is we need to dissolve this PPU chip. Adding flux, so it will be easier to add new fresh solder. Adding new uh, fresh solder to the pins really makes it easier to desolder it later Some pins are very easy to desolder and other pins are very hard to desolder. And that's because the uh, some pins are connected to the ground plate and uh, makes it harder to uh, heat up the solder and remove it. But it can help out with a, a solder wick and try to remove as much as possible. Or I mean you have to remove everything so be thorough. I'm gently checking if the pins have come loose completely and that all the solder is gone before uh, removing the PPU. Be very careful, careful removing it. There was some solder left so I had to heat it up and uh, in, in order to be able to remove the PPU. See, boop, gone. I had to come in with the solder wick again to just clear all the holes so I can fit the pins later and uh, just cleaning up with some IPA, isopropyl alcohol and then uh, adding the 40 pin socket in the PPU's place. For everything I'm soldering I'm always uh, adding flux. And also starting off by soldering the opposite corners so I'm sure that the, the, the socket won't twist and turn and yeah so it will be aligned against the board. And then soldering all of the pins. A lot of pins. I 
I also clean everything every time. Keep it nice and smooth. And placing the pin strips in the sockets. And placing the adapter board on the pin strips. And I'm also going to solder the uh, corners first. And then solder every pin. Just be sure that it is uh, flat against the pins so it doesn't get solder in a weird angle or something. I need to remove the adapter board again, so lift it off gently. Adding the second row of pins. A lot of the steps is just a repeat. You add the pins, you solder the corners, uh, make sure everything is straight and nice just make sure you solder everything where it needs to go and not the uh, in a different row or anything And also, I'm I'm definitely not a uh, a pro. I just do this for fun. <laughs> I quite enjoy it. It's a nice hobby. And then adding the socket for the PPU. As you can see, it's not uh, straight against the board, so you have to cut off the pins on this side. And when it's flat against the board, you just repeat, solder the corners, and then solder every pin, as usual. I'm sorry that my amazing hair comes into pictures from time to time. I mean, it really isn't a very difficult mod to do. The, the most difficult part is actually uh, removing the PPU. That could be very troublesome. But everything else is quite easy actually. When adding the uh, PPU to the, uh, the socket, be careful when you push it in so you don't bend any of the legs. Don't force it in. Thank you. 
you will need to solder the uh, jumpers J3 and also J5. And on your new power audio board you will need to solder jumper 7 and uh, jumper 8 if you want the RGB from it and not the S video. I will also have to add all the components to the board and make sure they are flat against the board of course. I'm soldering jumper 3 and 4 uh, because my power cable has a negative center on it. When adding the capacitors make sure you are adding them the correct way that plus goes to plus and minus goes to minus. And then just cut off the long legs. Time to solder back the ribbon cable from the main board to our new power audio board. You have to remove the eject mechanism for the new RGB board to be able to fit. And also have to cut off a piece of plastic for the PPU to fit. You have to file out a bit on the back side to be able to get the 3.5mm audio jacket to fit. Then uh, cut off the trace that goes to uh, pin 45 on the cartridge. When it's time to uh, solder the cables to the pads, I always pre-tin every cable and every pad before adding the cables will make it a much, much easier process. Just solder the right cable to the right pad.
I'm adding a bit of tape to the audio separator here so uh, I can see where I have to drill a hole on the other side of the casing. As you can see the tape is now stuck on that side and I know where to drill. Time to put it all together again. I hope that helped. Uh, please like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.